Good evening. Welcome to the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education meeting, our regular meeting of May 16th, 2016. Uh, Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mr. Senners. Here. Mrs. Jarvis. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mrs. Laura. Here. Mrs. McDonald. Here. Mrs. Bonifield is present. President Burton. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We'd like to welcome you all this evening. Uh, as you can see, we have a full agenda and a very full room, uh, which is usually a very good sign. Uh, it means we have a lot of things to celebrate in our district tonight, and we certainly do. Uh, if you would like an agenda and you're in our room this evening, you can find one just outside our doors on the table. They're there for your use. If you're following along at home, you can also find an agenda on our website, which is at www.livoniapublicschools.org. If you hover over the school board tab, you can drop down to agendas and follow along. Uh, if you are following along on our agenda, please note that we're going to be taking a brief break after item 3D, and that is to congratulate our honorees of the evening. This evening's meeting is uh, a regular meeting, or what we call a voting meeting. Uh, that means that the items that come before the board this evening have typically been before the board at least twice in a study session and in a committee of the whole, sometimes far more times than that. Uh, but it does mean that this board has discussed them at, some, uh, at, at quite a bit of detail and quite, quite great length. Uh, therefore, you may or may not see the amount of discussion uh, about a given item that you might expect before the board votes on it. Please know that this is not because we are not discussing these items, but it's because we have had much discussion at least twice before we get to this evening. If you are interested in the discussion of some of the items upon which we're voting, I really encourage you to tune in, especially to our Committee of the Whole meetings, because those meetings are typically when we go into great detail uh, on items before the board. Frequently, we ask administration for more information. Uh, and before they come to this meeting, we make sure that folks have, have a lot of questions and answers ready and uh, have have them answered, rather, and, uh, and they are ready to vote at that time. Uh, so again, if, if you are interested in, in more of the, the uh, daily business of the board, please do turn into our Committee of the Whole meetings. Uh, those are televised, and they are open to the public uh, as far as a personal attendance goes. So just as you have this evening, you can tune into those also. Uh, Mrs. Uh, McD I'm sorry, Mrs. Laura, will you please lead us in the pledge this evening? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on our agenda this evening is item three, communications, and we have a lot, as we said, to celebrate this evening. Mrs. Jenkins, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, President Burton. Good evening. Good evening, President Burton, members of the board, Superintendent Elquist. Uh, tonight, uh, we are actually, unfortunately, concluding our uh, student art gallery for this school year, um, which throughout the year has included the incredible works of students from our middle schools and our high schools. I know I don't speak for myself when I say that it's been a true pleasure to have our creative and talented students share their work with us here at the board office. Um, we've enjoyed everything from paintings and pencil drawings to uh, graphic design, sculpture, and even some handmade jewelry. And we thank each of the participating schools for sharing those works with us. We look forward to continuing this program next school year. Tonight it is my pleasure to, prevent, uh, to present certificates to five students from Frost Middle School who were selected by their teacher, Michelle Morton, uh, to have their works on display here at the board office for the next few weeks. The certificates read, Livonia Public Schools Certificate of Recognition, Student Art Gallery Featured Artist, selected to represent the Frost Middle School Art Department at the Board of Education Office, May 16th, 2016. And the certificates are signed by myself and by Superintendent Oquist. And I do know offhand tonight, um, it's a very busy time of the school year. We are missing, unfortunately, missing a couple that I know of so far. Um, but we'll get started with the presentation. I'll go ahead and read their names, of course, and make sure that they uh, receive their certificates if they're unable to be with us this evening. So first up, we have um, Alyssa Anderson, who is an eighth grader. And I do know Alyssa is with us this evening. So come on up, Alyssa. Here's your certificate. Left hand painting. Okay, and that's a still life, and is it with Chuck? 
Acrylic. Acrylic. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know, uh, well, I'll announce her name anyway, just in case. Uh, Cameron Hatfield, who is an eighth grade student as well. I believe Cameron is currently trying out for the POM team. So good luck to her tonight. Yes. And I will make sure that she gets her certificate. Um, how about Matthew Helly? Matthew in the crowd tonight? No, I wasn't sure about Matthew. I'll be sure he gets his uh, certificate as well. Um, how about Kara Hill? Kara Hill is with us this yes. evening. Yes. All right. Hi, Kara. And Kara is a seventh grade student. And which, which piece is yours? I'm the one in the center on the top. Okay. Self-portrait, I bet. Portrait. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. And possibly last but not least, uh, Sarah Ruskell. Sarah is also a seventh grade student. Well, Sarah, this evening? Okay, I wasn't sure about her either. So I will make sure that she receives these, of course, or that they, uh, all three receive these certificates. Um, join me once again in con congratulating these art students and thank them for sharing their work with us. And as I always like to point out, uh, we also have a pretty awesome display in the lobby um, of the board office here. And this month, we are featuring the artwork of Cooper Upper Elementary and the Career Center. So make sure to stop by on your way out and check those pieces out as well. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And to the family of our artists that are featured this evening, if you'd like to come up during our break to take some photographs, you're certainly welcome to do so. We'd be happy, be happy to have you do that. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Other than we're amazed at your ability. Mm -hmm. I, I have mm -hmm. said this for, for each time that our student the board We are thrilled. And I can speak for a lot of folks. I know certainly myself, it is not a talent that I have. So I am truly amazed at what you guys can do. And, and I thank you so much for sharing it with, with us at the board level and uh, with the whole community on, the, on our televised uh, meetings. It's pretty exciting stuff. But thank you very much. Uh, the next. Schools Education Foundation update and the recognition of our corporate donors. Mrs. Jenkins. Hey, thank you, President Burton. Uh, Livonia Public Schools is so fortunate to have the ongoing support of the LPS Education Foundation, a, a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to providing financial support, support to our schools through programs such as the Competitive Edge College Savings Program for kindergartners, the very popular class, Classroom Grants Program, and much more. Joining us tonight, we have the LPS Education Foundation President, Mrs. Diane Palacelli, who will offer an informative update on all the great things happening uh, with the foundation. Mrs. Palacelli is retired from Ford Motor Company and has been tirele tirelessly volunteering on the foundation's board of directors since 2008. She serves as the foundation's primary fundraiser for corporate donations, among many other responsibilities. She and I work closely together on many projects, and I can speak, I, trust me when I say she is a true gem. So with that, I'd love to welcome Mrs. Palacelli for, her, for the foundation update. Thank you, Mrs. Jenkins, President Burton, board members, and Superintendent Mrs. Oquist. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to provide you an update tonight on the many accomplishments of the LPS Education Foundation. It's a privilege for me to represent the foundation, to talk about our programs, and how proud we are to serve Livonia Public Schools. I'd like to introduce my colleague tonight, Mr. Paul Condon, if you would please join me at the podium. <laughs> Paul's been a member of the foundation board for about three years, and he assumes responsibility for marketing, and he and I work together on corporate giving. As I was preparing for this evening's meeting, I look back at all the foundation has done over the past year. And I'm proud to tell you that the Education Foundation has planned and participated in 82 events over that year. That's a really big wow, isn't it? Um, that means one or two events a year. Or I mean one or two events a week for the whole year. And that does not include our monthly board meetings or any of the committee meetings that we hold to prepare for those events. So I've grouped these events together to just give you the highlights. 
Let's start with the major fundraisers, including our Back to School Party, which was held in August at Stevenson High School. It was a great event. We had a turnout of over 1,000 parents and children. And then last fall, we had our annual luncheon, which featured U.S. District Attorney Barbara McQuaid. Monies raised from both events go directly to the Competitive Edge College Savings Program. But the success of the fundraisers is directly linked to the many corporate sponsors who help defray our expenses, and to all of the community members who participate, and we thank them all very much. Our premier program, the Competitive Edge College Savings Program, now has 1,750 students, for whom we've set up 529 college savings accounts. We met with the parents of kindergarten students at four el 14 elementary schools in the fall, and we educated them on the benefits of starting to save early for college and to open their own 529 accounts, in addition to the accounts set up by the foundation for their children. Next is the grant program. We awarded 16 grants this year, totaling $39,000. We believe the district has something very unique to offer the community through the special resources provided by these grants. And having visited some of the classrooms myself, I can tell you it's great to see the enthusiasm of the young students who benefit from things like Chromebooks or leadership tools or special music resources all provided by grants. We started two new programs this year. First of all, a special reading program at Grant Elementary School organized by the foundation in conjunction with the district and supported by volunteers, many of whom are retired LPS teachers. Our other program is called a Champions Program, and each of the 26 buildings in the district has an employee who has volunteered to be the building champion. This individual met with the staff in their building to provide an update on the accomplishments of the foundation. And as a result, financial support from the LPS employees has increased a whopping 25%. All of those funds go right back into the grant program, along with additional uh, donations from the foundation. And we're very, very grateful to the support received by the LPS staff. Our corporate donors have been very generous again this year. We have 25 on our list, and many of them donate year after year. And you can find out who they are by looking at the dialogue, the uh, newsletter of the district, as well as the website for the foundation, lpsfoundation.org. I'm proud to say we have a new corporate donor this year, a name that you would recognize, Team Showstack Family Restaurants. They have been very generous to us, and we're very grateful to have their support as well. The PTAs are an important corporate pounder, found, uh, partner of the foundation, and we participated in 18 PTA meetings this year to keep them informed of our progress as well. And we're very, very uh, appreciative of their financial support also. And then there were other community events where the foundation has had a presence. Some of these events include Passport to Safety, the open house at the Jack E. Kirksey Recreational Center, and the golf tournament benefiting Forgotten Harvest, as well as participating in the 50th anniversary of Stevenson High School. And in addition, we supported and participated in the fundraiser for the Clarenceville Education Foundation, which is starting up this year. So you can see we have greatly expanded our presence in the community, which was one of our major goals this year. Proud to say all this work is done by the 15 volunteer directors of the foundation who freely give their time. And I want you to know, we've become like a family. We talk to one another nearly every day, and we socialize together. Don't we, Paul? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so what's coming up? Well, coming up, we're already planning uh, our back-to-school party to be held on August 24 at Churchill High School. It's a fun event. Again, as I said, all of the proceeds go to the Competitive Edge College Savings Program. And we've started planning for our fall luncheon and look for further details on our website. So to conclude, I'd like to thank our superintendent, Mrs. Oquist, and her staff for supporting our mission. We appreciate your involvement and your enthusiasm. I'd like to give a special thank you to Mrs. Jenkins and Mrs. Patterson, who are always there when we need extra help. I'd like to thank President Burton, Mrs. Jarvis, and Mrs. Wozniak, who also serve on our foundation board. And we appreciate all of the support that we receive from you. Thank you all very much. 
All this is made possible through community involvement and the generosity of our donors, including the LPS staff, the PTAs, and the PTSAs, and especially through the hard work of the volunteers of the foundation who so willingly donate their time, and I'm so proud to represent them tonight. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Are there any questions or, or comments from our superintendent or our board? Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you Thank you so very much. much. Mrs. Oquist? Thank you. Just a, just a quick uh, follow-up to that. So, Diane, thank you so much. Um, Diane is a dynamo, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't captured that. And, and Paul is such a tremendous support as well. Thank you both for being here this evening, but most of all for what you do uh, each and every day. Um, I know there is work going on behind the scenes from the LPS Foundation, which is a completely um, nonprofit volunteer um, group of folks who truly are dynamic. Um, in our monthly meetings, it is amazing the ideas that are generated, the enthusiasm to support our staff who are working with our students is tremendous. So we are so grateful to have you, and we are so grateful for your continued uh, work on behalf of our district. We are so fortunate to have the LPS Education Foundation. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Already. Again, thank you so much. It is, it's, it's appreciated from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 3C, uh, gifts to the Livonia Public Schools first robotics team. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bonfield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the generous monetary and in-kind donations of $5,000 or more from ASIN, Denso, Ford Motor Company, Linear AMS, Livonia Public Schools, and Roush, one to $4,000 from Alley Ray Media, BAE Systems, BASF, Bright House Networks, Cooper Standard, HM White, and RCO Technologies, and $1,000 from 4M Industries, Inc., Alpha USA, Elro Steel, Duckworth & Associates, Kiwanis Club of Livonia, NYX Incorporated, Tom Promo Marketing, and Vital Signs. Support. Support. We have a lot. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Johnson and, and others. We'll put Mr. Johnson's name on there. Uh, and Mrs. Jenkins, I turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, President Burton. Uh, the following recognition has also become an annual update. How fortunate are we to not only have a robotics program in our school district, but one that is growing and becoming more and more recognized around the state. Livonia Warriors is our high school, our high school team uh, comprised of students from Churchill, Franklin, and Stevenson. Together they design, build, and program a robot to compete, to compete in the first robotics competitions throughout their season. Uh, joining us this evening is the award-winning robot named Draco. He's over in the corner. He's a dragon, and he uh, captured awards this season for his design and imagery. Please feel free to introduce yourself at the break. He is super nice. <laughs> uh, tonight we are here not only to highlight our Livonia Warriors team, which most of, if not all, are seated in the audience with us here tonight, but also to publicly thank all of the wonderful mentors and corporate donors that make this amazing program possible. As stated in the motion, each has contributed greatly to, to the success of this program. Before we recognize our sponsors, I'd, I'd like to show a three-minute video, which of course was produced by the students. Um, I think it captures the essence of the program far better than I can. So with that, hit it, Nick, from way upstairs. <laughs> uh, certificates of appreciation for all of the companies that have uh, contributed to the Livonia Warriors. So again, we're sort of going to play this by ear. Um, I know we have a handful of representatives from the corporations here this evening. Those who are not present uh, will just move along and we'll be sure they receive their certificates. Uh, first, we have a certificate of appreciation uh, for Aishin. Anyone from Aishin here? Okay. Again, it's a very busy time of the year. How about Denzo? Anyone from Denzo? Nope. Okay. 
Ford Motor Company. All right. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> How about Linear AMS? No. Okay. Livonia Public Schools. Yes. yes. We'll accept that one over here. <laughs> yep. We can present to Superintendent Oquist. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll just run that right over. <laughs> okay, how about Roush? Right next to me. Right next yeah. to me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> next we have BAE, BAE Systems. We're on a roll. How about BASF? Nope. Oh, jinxed it. Allie Ray Media? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Bright House Networks? Okay. Cooper Standard? H.M. White, nope. RCO Technologies, no. okay, that was a maybe, but no, 4M Industries, okay, Alpha USA, <coughs> Elro Steel, Duckworth and Associates. All right. <laughs> Kiwanis Club of Livonia. Okay. NYX Incorporated. Okay. Uh, Tom Promo Marketing. And vital signs. Anyone from vital signs? Okay. Very good. Well, join me once again in thanking these wonderful corporate sponsors. Okay. As we did with Should our student artist salsa, and I know we are going to continue on in a moment. As we as we did with our uh, our student artist salsa, we would like to at the break uh, have a, a photo opportunity for those who are the cor uh, the corporate donors for the robotics program. So make sure you don't get away too soon. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, should we give the video a try again? Okay. <laughs> Looks like we might be ready to roll with sound. But the main part is you really need to be encouraging across like all fields of the program. Continue to move on with it. I think we'll make great progress and stuff will get done. But uh, just making everyone really feel part of the team. And I think that's really crucial to make the team. The 28-32 six-week build period this season utilized a task force design process, culminating in one great robot. John, these students have been working since about May to make this team. They've written letters, they've done hours of community service, they've attended and planned and worked community impact events, they've gone to sponsorship presentations, they've done fundraising, they've done a lot. The Livonia Warriors consist of students from the three high schools in Livonia. We take every opportunity to model STEM education and the tenets of FIRST Robotics to youngsters throughout the city. Currently, we instituted an all-girls team competing in two off-season events, both West Bloomfield and Mark. Uh, I mean, I've really enjoyed this one, but I do like last year's because we changed a lot in terms of we did better during the season. We were cooperating better, we were just all around communicating better, which got stuff done, which helped us to do better in the season. Seeing how stuff has started to come together, it seems like we'll be able to do a lot of the tasks consistently. I think we'll be a good contributor to the Alliance, uh, if not uh, a team that is caring. 
The building of our practice field consisted of a month of Saturdays and an army of workers. It was amazing to watch it go up and so fun to invite other teams to come play. The Livonia Warriors strive to be a model team positioning our students for success and promoting first at every opportunity. FRC Team 2832, the Livonia Warriors, gear up. We would like to direct you all to the Livonia Warriors on YouTube. They have their own channel. And um, the video we were going to show tonight is... Um, Three minutes. There's another three-minute video on there. Be sure to watch both. We had a hard time choosing tonight which one we were going to play. They're both student-produced and really give you a great sense of the robotics program. Uh, so at this time, I would be remiss if I didn't um, ask the, the coach who puts this all together uh, to join us at the podium, if I, if I may, Mrs. Yselina Carlini. This evening, I would like to thank President Burton, the Board of Education, the Cabinet, Mrs. Jenkins, and Superintendent Oquist for your continued support and even, even having us here this evening. It is my honor to represent the Livonia Warriors in acknowledging our 2016 sponsors. I would like to extend immense gratitude to each of our sponsors at all levels because without your support, we could do nothing. In making our school system and sponsors proud, I am most pleased in reporting that this year, robotics had several first times ever. For the first time ever, Livonia Public Schools had three high schools, three middle schools, comprising of four competition robotics teams competing at the district level in the state of Michigan. These competitions, for the first time ever, we represented every school at the secondary level in Livonia Public Schools. The FT <laughs> The FTC middle school teams, the Emerson Robo Eagles, the Frost Robo Phantoms, and the Holmes Robo Hawks, all qualified for positions in the semifinals of the competitions in both Livonia and Howell. All three teams won awards, and the Emerson Robo Eagles were finalists for the championship. For the first time ever, the Livonia Warriors took a trailer they purchased last season and traveled to seven competitions. They competed in Monroe. Midland, West Bloomfield, All Girls, Flint, Kettering, Southfield, Livonia, and Lake Superior State in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay. Livonia, again, for the first time ever, was the top bot at Midland. We won the championship and then took 14 young women to the West Bloomfield All Girls competition and came back champions and then went to Lake Superior State University and came back as champions again. We took, we took some awards this season as well. We won the UL Industrial Safety Award in Southfield. The Industrial Safety Award sponsored by Underwriter Laboratories celebrates the team that progresses beyond safety fundamentals by using innovative ways to eliminate, to eliminate or protect against hazards. The winning team consistently demonstrates excellent in industrial safety performance that outshines throughout the competition from load in to load out. The Warriors also won the first hard hat award in safety at Southfield, Livonia, and Sault Ste. Marie. And Nick Stanley out of Stevenson High School took safety star of the day. At Livonia, we won the imagery award. This award celebrates the attractiveness in engineering and outstanding visual aesthetic integration from the machine to the team appearance. All of the teams this year showed strength, resilience, and dedication to their craft. However, there was one team that demonstrated a fighting spirit that stood out above all the others. This team's ferocious attention to detail lit up the competition and could be seen through their use of color, light, and team presentation. On and off the field, 
these soldiers won this battle. Congratulations, Team 2832, the Livonia Warriors. Whether, whether in competition, safety, or downright looking good, Livonia Robotics rocked this season. Are there questions or comments for our superintendent or our board members? Super Mrs. cool. Yes, <laughs> Mrs. Jarvis. Naturally. Uh, I just wanted to not only compliment the Livonia Warriors, but the entire district and the community. This is not a team that operates in a vacuum. And without the support of the entire district and our community support, which uh, the team relies on so heavily, uh, this team could not have the success and the bragging rights that it earned this year. So thank you to the Warriors, but thank you also to all of LPS and also to all of Livonia. You. Mrs. Oquist. I just wanted to um, once again congratulate all of our students. It is wonderful to have so many of you here this evening. Um, and beside you are, are many, uh, many parents that I see. And I think um, this, I know that this club, I think Mrs. Carlini would join me in saying, has such tremendous parent support. Um, and community support. So I'd like to acknowledge all the parents in the in the crowd who are here um, with your students this evening, um, to all of the members of our robotics teams the, at the three middle schools and from the three high schools to form our Livonia Warriors. Um, you make us tremendously proud, um, both at our competitions and as you prepare for them. I also wanted to acknowledge, um, in addition to the many tens of thousands of dollars provided by our corporate sponsors, I just have to note that um, many of these, these friends in the corporate community and in the business community partner with us not only in robotics, um, but could have also been mentioned in the LPS Foundation report just prior, um, are part of our Here to There outreach uh, to our high school students. You serve as such outstanding mentors, um, and your civic mindedness um, provide such tremendous opportunity to our students and provide them an opportunity to see what is possible in the future. Um, so I thank each of you for being here this evening, but most of all for what you do in mentorship, um, in your time, in your talent, and certainly your generosity. So, and then certainly a, a shout out to Mrs. Carlini who brings it all together and works tirelessly on this. So um, we could not be more proud of the Warriors and uh, thank you for the great presentation this evening. We'll look forward to catching uh, the video on YouTube. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board members? All right. And for, for the benefit, benefit of the public, if you're tuning in for the first time to some of our robotics uh, information, as Mrs. Oak was mentioned, uh, some of the donations have not strictly been in the form of dollars, although dollars are important. Uh, but many of the folks who support this team from our area, our, our community companies, uh, get in uh, and work with our students one-on-one, -on -one, teaching them what they know and teaching them how to, how to build, how to look for a career in this, in this area uh, when they leave Livonia Public Schools or leave college, wherever they may be going next. Uh, but it's, it is so appreciated, not simply to write a check, but actually get in and work hands-on with our students. And it's, it's, it's noted, and it's, it's unusual, and it's very appreciated. So. Any other questions or comments from the board? No? Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Johnson. Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 3D, board member recognition for MASB certification and awards. Uh, the Livorni Board of Education takes its responsibilities very seriously. And we take also seriously training in order to carry out these responsibilities. To that end, such pro professional development is included in our code of ethics and in our board operating procedures as follows. A portion of our code of ethics reads, I will stay informed about current educational issues by individual study and through participation in programs providing needed information. For example, those sponsored by my state and national school board organizations. 
And specifically from our board operating procedures, board members are expected to become certified board members within the first two years of their service. Dan Centers, will you please join me at the podium? Dan was recently recognized by the Michigan Association of School Boards as a certified board member. To those of us who sit on the board, we know exactly what that means, but most folks beyond the seven don't. To be a certified board member means you have put in a, a minimum of 30 hours in classes specifically designed to help make you a very educated, informed board member and one who's ready to take on the complex decisions that face the board on a weekly basis. The classes that have been completed and the training that's been undergone include school policy, school finance and budget, school law, curriculum and instruction, community relations leadership, labor relations, the legislative process, and data-informed decision-making. This is all above and beyond board meetings and activities within the school district, but taken care of on, uh, usually on weekends on a board member's own time, and it comprises at least 30 hours of classroom time. Dan, we thank you very much for your service to our school district. Uh, we have a certificate, in addition to the one presented from MASB, that reads, Certificate of Recognition, Livonia Public Schools Board Trustee Dan Centers, on behalf of the Livonia Board of Education and the Superintendent, for achieving a Level 1 certification from the Michigan Association of School Boards, May 16, 2016. Thank you so much. Previously certified also, if you've not followed along many of our board meetings over the years, are Diane Laura, Mark Johnson, Tammy Bonifield, and myself. At this time, Mark Johnson and Tammy Bonifield, will you please join me at the podium? As I stated, our board does take very seriously our training to make sure that we can do a very, very good, very informed job for our community. Another portion of our board operating procedures reads, Board members are expected to further their professional training and to take advantage of available training or conferences within or outside of the district on an ongoing basis. Mark and Tammy were recently recognized by the Michigan Association of School Boards with the Award of Distinction. In addition to the certified board member classes, the Award of Distinction requires 208 additional education credits. Those can be gained from Michigan Association of School Board classes, other de professional development opportunities, such as school law and finance seminars, and leadership service to our community. 208 hours is nothing to sneeze at, and we thank our board members immensely for making sure that they are informed and educated on an ongoing basis. We have certificates also for Tammy and Mark that both read Certificate of Recognition, Livonia Public Schools Board Secre Secretary Pan Tammy Bonifield, and Livonia Public Schools Board Trustee Mark Johnson. On behalf of the Board of Education and the Superintendent for achieving Level 3 Award of Distinction from the Michigan Association of School Boards, May 16, 2016. Thank you so much for your service. Again, I just have to take this opportunity to thank our board members. Uh, it's, it is uh, a requirement to be 18 years of age in order to serve on a school board and a requirement to live in the community in which you serve, and that's about it. But to be a really, really good school board member, you've got to go way beyond that. These folks that are sitting before you tonight do exactly that. They go above and beyond. They make sure that they're educated in state issues. They make sure that they're current in, in our school district, and it is so appreciated. Mrs. Oquist, would you like to add anything? Sure. I know that'll be a big surprise to the crowd that I have a few things that I'd like to add. Uh, no, in all seriousness, I had the opportunity and the pleasure of attending um, with uh, Trustee Johnson and Trustee Bonifield and Trustee Centers um, the awards dinner a couple of weeks ago. Um, and there were uh, many districts from Wayne County represented um, there that evening. I believe we were the only district with three board members being recognized. Um, for both Level 1 and Level 3 um, Award of Distinction certification. 
And I do have to say, I have the opportunity to not only um, work with these folks on a regular basis, but know the complexity of the decision making that, that goes on um, each and every week, um, and their ability to grasp a wide range of topics with whom we, we may deal with on a daily basis, um, but they become familiar not only in their work on the board, but in this additional professional development. Um, you may or may not know um, that our board is, has recently been selected as one of four in the state of Michigan to go through a pilot program um, as a board superintendent team on high impact governance, um, utilizing eight powerful practices um, to enhance the work of the Board of Education and Superintendent to be of benefit to their school district. Um, that speaks volumes to the quality of this board, their commitment to their own professional growth, and again, those are days and times um, that they are all willing to put in above and beyond um, their normal board duties um, to be part of this pilot, and we are so excited to begin with that work. In fact, uh, we're using what would have normally been our, our Monday off in June um, to begin um, working on that, and uh, I could not be uh, more proud um, to work in conjunction with you on behalf of the students and staff and community we serve. So thank you and congratulations to, to each of you. Any questions or comments from the board? All righty. Uh, at this time, uh, we are going to take a brief break, five to 10 minutes or so of a recess in order to congratulate our honorees of this evening. If you are one of our honorees, please don't sneak off too quickly. Please do come up to the front so you can get uh, pictures taken and so forth. We'd love to do that. Uh, and at this time, we are at recess. Thank you. Welcome back to the continuation of the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education meeting, our general meeting of May 16th, 2016. Following our recess, we are now at item 3E, written communications. Do any board members have written communications they would like to share? President Burton. Mrs. Bonfield. Um, this is a note from uh, the resolution for Superintendent Upton. Uh, dear friends, Thank you once again for the sympathy resolution in tribute to Ron regarding his super, superintendency of Livonia schools from 1958 through 1974. He was so committed to his job there and grateful for the support and dedication of so many friends. He would be very touched by your gracious acknowledgement of his service as we are proud, cordially, Jane Upton. Thank you. Are there any other written correspondences that any board member would like to share? No. Seeing none, we'll move on to item 3F, audience communications. Uh, audience communications is designed as a time for the board to listen to members of our community. Uh, we do ask that everybody honor the three minute time limit, and that is so that we can be fair to everyone and make sure that everyone has a time to speak to the board. Uh, seeing as this is, uh, these are items that uh, may or may not be uh, appearing on our agenda, uh, it is designed specifically as a time for the board to listen to the audience communications. Uh, we, it is not a, a question and answer type of a time. Your response from the board uh, will come from one, or two, one of two individuals. Uh, is a bit of a background information. The role of the Board of Education falls into three main categories. That is the hiring and the evaluation of our superintendent, and we are thrilled to have successfully, very successfully accomplished that this year in the hiring of Mrs. Oquist as our superintendent. Uh, it also covers setting policy for the district, and it covers setting our strategic plan or our long-term goals for our district and aligning our budget to those goals. Therefore, if your, if your topic uh, is in relation to any of those items, you can expect a response back from the board if you've indicated that you would like a response back. If it falls under any of the other uh, items, as we would refer to as some of the day-to-day -day operational items of the district, you could expect a response back uh, from our superintendent, Mrs. Oquist, uh, again, if you've indicated that you would like a response back. Uh, we also have a uh, timer uh, for three minutes, so if you hear a little beep, that's just a, what we found is to be the most polite way to let you know that you've, you've reached your time limit. It, it beats the heck out of somebody interrupting you. So uh, if, you, if you do hear that, if you could wrap up your comments, it would be appreciated. 
Uh, our first speaker with audience communications this evening is Kathleen Bilger. Kathleen? Uh, good evening, board, Mrs. Oquist, and teachers in the audience. Good evening. Uh, I, came to, I came this evening because I became very excited about a project that I got involved with, and I really felt that this was something that I wanted to bring to Livonia. I think it would be excellent for all the students in Livonia to participate in this. Um, as several of the board members know, but the audience doesn't, is I spent many, many years here in the PTA. Um, I spent time on the state PTA board as the state reflections chairman uh, and stuff, so I was very familiar with the, art, the reflections art competition. Um, so then I had this opportunity with the Michigan Historical Society to be a judge for the Michigan History Day competition. Uh, that occurred last month. I went to the History Day competition and came. I think I wasn't out of there 15 minutes and I was on the phone to uh, board member Liz Jarvis and said, Livonia has to do this. I have never seen anything so well organized in my life or kids so enthused about history. It was such an amazing experience. I'm now a national mentor. Uh, every board member received a copy of the packet. Mrs. Oquist, in addition to the packet, I also um, gave you the fuller packet that um, explains a bit more about the program and includes how this fits into the um, Common Core, which is what we're all about these days. We're all about fitting things into the Common Core. Let me tell you a little bit about this program. History Day competition starts at the school level. It is for grades 4 through 12. There are age categories, just like there are in the Reflections program. There's five different areas in which the students can compete. They can do a website design. They can do a documentary. They can get up and do a play or a speech. They can do a research paper. They can make a trifold exhibit. I was an exhibit judge. Uh, so there's five different areas. You have kids who are all into website design. You have kids who are into theater. There's many, many ways that the, the kids can incorporate their the activities that they like to do and be part of this. Each year, there's a different theme. I always mess up the theme for this year. Encounter, exchange, I can't remember the last one. I screwed it up again. I saw some of the neatest things going on there. Uh, one of the children that I, was, that I was talking to as a judge did a project on Teddy Roosevelt. And he, he had all kinds of things about Teddy Roosevelt. He had visited some national parks. That's what, that's what got him started. I said, gee, what do you think Teddy Roosevelt would have said about the pollution in the Great Lakes and Flint water crisis? And he goes, Mrs. Bilger, I can give you quotes. He would have hated it. He could tell me all about current events. I think this belongs in Livonia Public Schools. I am willing to commit the time to help the schools do it. The Michigan, PT, the Michigan Historical Society and the Michigan Historical Magazine will also come in and help you get started. Students go on to the district level down, down in Detroit and the state level, wherever the state competition happens to be, and then there's also a national competition. I do hope you'll take the time to look over the materials because I really would like to see this happen in our school districts. In our school district, I think it would be a wonderful thing for the kids. So thank you very much. And if any teachers in the audience are interested, I do have extra brochures if, you're, if you want to take one. Thank you Thanks. so much. Our next speaker is Tracy Favaro. Hello, thanks for allowing me to speak. My name is Tracy Favreau, and I teach in the resource room at Churchill High School. I have wonderful things to say about Livonia Public Schools. I went through Livonia Public Schools. Bentley Bulldogs? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Go Bulldogs. Yeah. Um, I bought a house in Livonia so my kids could go through, my three kids went through Livonia Public Schools. These are all wonderful, wonderful experiences. I've been teaching in Livonia for 26 years. I have loved my career. Unfortunately, the climate, the demands, and the financial compensations have all changed. Both of my daughters, their 
now in college, um, wanted to be special education teachers. But my husband and I refused to allow that. Even if they landed a job upon graduation, there'd be no way they could afford to move out. And I wanted them to move out. Um, <laughs> I have colleagues on step two, like after eight years of teaching, so I'm aware that it's not financially feasible for them to live on their own and teach. So, um, Lavonia missed out on these girls. They would have been awesome teachers. They're wonderful people. Um, most all of my friends are teachers um, in, in and out of this district. Um, we went into teaching because we love teaching and we love students. Uh, five or six years ago, I could have asked any one of my friends or colleagues, do you like your job? And all of them would have said yes. Now that has definitely changed. Um, salaries have stayed stagnant or decreased for many years. This makes teaching an unacceptable job for any person that would like to raise a family. And I don't think we can afford to send this message. The state has put, the state has put on us expectations that are unrealistic and counterproductive to building relationships with kids. The demands for paperwork and state mandates for teacher evaluations and curriculum and all of this are so high that I don't feel like we can best support our students academically. A student is, is more than a test score. LPS has to balance the data with student relationships. And I'm asking you to advocate for change at the state level to allow us to better serve our students. Um, relationships with students is one of the most important part of our jobs. Um, I am so lucky right now in my, um, for the second year in a row, I have this wonderful opportunity to work with all of the seniors in the resource room at Churchill. I have this luxury of meeting with them like one-on-one -on -one or in small groups and um, I help them apply to college. We submit transcripts, ACT scores, um, people come in and speak from Schoolcraft and all these different certificate programs. Um, we sign up together for really oh, disability support counselors at the colleges that they're going to and financial aid and all of this. It's very hard for people, um, especially anyone with a disability of any kind to go through and traverse on their own. So I'm lucky that I can do that. These relationships um, are extremely important and I'm so lucky that it allows me to build these relationships because I have this piece of time that I can do that. Um, at one time I thought I'd work much more than my 30 years um, because I started right out of college. Um, but now I'm just not that sure. Um, please understand that um, we need you to fight at both the state level and the district level to maintain LPS as this excellent district that it has been and needs to continue to be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Heidi Posh. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Heidi Posh. In 1998, I was fortunate to have three offers of employment, two full-time from other districts, and an offer from Livonia for a six-tenth position at Stevenson. Even though it was only slightly more than half-time, I took the Livonia job. I was confident that as long as I was a good employee, the district would offer me a future with financial stability and a wonderful community and the opportunity for pro professional growth. My gamble paid off. By the start of my second year, I was made full time. I was making a good wage and was afforded opportunities such as being department head at Stevenson and being the district art teacher leader. The reason I'm speaking today is because I he see a huge difference between the opportunities I was given and those that our newer members are receiving. I was rewarded for my teaching experience by receiving yearly step increases. Because of this financial stability, I was able to purchase a nice home in the area. I wanted to live here so I could send my daughter to school in a district, and I'm pleased to say that she's a happy fifth grader at Johnson currently. My younger colleagues have not seen the same pay increases. Even if they want to, many cannot afford to live and send their children to schools in the community where they teach, which is a shame for them and for LPS. 
While listening to the thoughtful words of my fellow teachers at these meetings, I have heard a repeated theme. Newer teachers will leave if the district does not invest in them. What I know is they are leaving. The last two years, Young, enthusiastic, hardworking, and well-liked art teachers, too, have left Livonia. One was in his third year, still without a requested full-time position. He left to take a job in a parochial school, which is something that we never heard of happening before. The other art teacher was in her second year and got the word that she would be in three new buildings starting in the fall and was also still not full-time. She left to go back to bartending, which she told me she made more money doing and she worked fewer hours. Recently at our Fine Arts Festival, I spoke to two other current art teachers who are actively looking at other districts. Both have spent several years with part-time positions and are living with the uncertainty of next year's schedules. They, do, they deserve the stability that, that I had. I took a gamble on a part-time position in a great district, but it is not a gamble to invest in your teachers. It's simple. If people do not feel appreciated and treated fairly, they will look elsewhere. We need the combination of young and enthusiastic, and not quite as young, but experienced. That combination is a sure bet for Livonia Public Schools and for our students. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are, are there any other members of the audience who would like to communicate at Audience Communications? Seeing none, our next... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, come forward. Good evening. Good evening. We have some blue slips on the podium, if you don't mind, when, or at least I think we do. There's no... Nope. Are they? Okay, we'll get one to you. If you don't mind, after you're finished speaking, if you get one to us, that would be terrific. You could either hand it uh, on either end of the table. That way we have a record of your, of your participation this evening. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Janine Martinez. I'm a resident of Lowell for 20 years. I have three daughters in 10th grade, 8th grade, and 5th grade, and currently all attending LPS schools and all play hockey. I come here today to ask, I would like to start a Livonia Unified Girls High School hockey team. This has been brought up three years ago by to the AD of Stevenson High School was denied. It was brought up six years ago, same thing, was denied. So here I am three years later, and I'm making my go around. Um, I've actually had a meeting with a principal at Stevenson High School and tried to understand what the rules are of LPS and how to get it started. He had told me in order to be a varsity sport, you have to be recognized by MHSAA, reg registered. And unfortunately, girls high school hockey is not recognized and nor will it ever be recognized because you need to have a minimum of 50 girls high school teams in the state of Michigan. Currently there is 18. And even if you add up all the girls teams in Michigan, it still wouldn't be 50 teams. I asked him, okay, well, other high schools have gone the club route. He said, okay, well, it's gotta be co-ed. I said, it's a girls high school hockey team. That's not gonna happen. Okay, well, then also it needs to be sponsored, have to have a LPS member sponsor it and attend all events. I can't see that happening either. My suggestion is, all I'm looking for is use the Livonia Unified name. I'm not looking for any funds from Livonia Public Schools. It will be self-funded by the players. I have many volunteers already willing to help coach. All I'm asking for is I need to understand how I can get insurance through the school for the athletes to play because I cannot register the team with USA Hockey because USA Hockey does not reg recognize girls high school hockey. I can't get registered with MSAA because they don't recognize girls high school hockey. Um, <clears throat> and all I've had to ask as well is I need to have Livonia Public Schools send an email blast. I would like to start a flyer so that way I can make sure I reach out every girl in Livonia. Whether she had played hockey 10 years ago, I know the girls currently playing hockey, but I don't know girls that had played 10 years ago and I hate for someone to miss an opportunity that I don't know of. Another thing I would, I would need is I need the girls would need to have their grade verified. This doesn't have to be done by the AD. It would take none of their time. The girls, what simply would they do is they print out their transcript, go to the principal or the AD, have them two minutes, look at it, verify that they meet the 2.0 grade point average, that it's them, and initial it. There's a girls' league, and they have their rules that are required, and that's one of the rules is they try to follow MHSA guideline rules. 
the fortunate thing for girls playing hockey is boys can play high school, they can play travel, and they can play house. Girls can only play travel, and that's if you make the team. So at the high school level age girls, the dropout rate is drastically because the girls have nowhere to play. I would love to give girls high school a place to play. I would love for them to play for their high school and represent their high school and having to connect with their high school. And unfortunately, there are so many girls that end up quit quitting hockey. So in the end, there's, I would like to get club status for a Livonia Unified Girls High School hockey team. I'm asking for no resources from LPS. It's 100% paid for the student. I just would like a flyer, grades checked, and look into school insurance. And in the end, there's three boys high school hockey teams that are allowed to play hockey. There are no girls high school teams allowed to play hockey. There are three girls high schools that skate out of Livonia rinks, which are Northville, Northville JV, and Mercy. Those are not Livonia public schools. They're skating out of Eddie Edgar. Um, so I just like the girls to give a place to play. And I'd like to get a response. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mrs. Oquist, will you take care of a response uh, on behalf of the board, seeing as this is a daily item? I will. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience who would like to address the board this evening? Yes. Mrs. Wozniak, do we have one more blue slip available? Thank you. Thank you for your time. I'll be brief. My name is Rob Kucharski. Rob, if I could interrupt you for just a moment. If you yes. go, go ahead and speak to the board, but if you could afterward get a blue slip to I us that we will have a record. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Yes, my name is Rob Kucharski. I'm also a parent in the district and a school employee. I wanted to uh, give my hats off to the um, Warriors uh, Activity Club. Uh, what a great program. I also want to give kudos out to my colleagues here and, and their support. But I'm not here as an LEA member or employee. I'm also here to piggyback on uh, Janine Martinez's request for an activity or club status for a unified girls hockey club. Um, as you know, we're proud to... Uh, proud city and uh, we could be considered hockey city uh, with our fine high school programs for the boys. We're simply looking for an activity club status and would like a response and somehow um, some information on how to um, get that ball rolling. So I would just like to piggyback that and um, make sure that we can kind of get some answers on how we can possibly do that and possibly look into it. I was part of a group uh, a few years back that kind of looked into it and uh, kind of got sidetracked. But uh, I think Janine is a perfect person to um, you know, spearhead something like this as a parent. She's not only a hockey mom, uh, she is a decorated referee, um, parent, and uh, a real good person for um, spearheading something like this. So I just wanted to uh, make my thoughts known today. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Likewise, Mrs. Oquist, could you uh, respond on behalf of the board? I will. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience who would like to approach the board this evening? Seeing none, the next item on our agenda is item 3G, response to prior audience communications. Um, I have expressed these thoughts in the past, and for the benefit of those who may be different in our audience e this evening, either uh, present or at home, uh, first and foremost, I want to express that, that uh, the message that we've been hearing from our teachers uh, has been heard and has been understood. And the issues that are being brought forth by the teachers Oh, good. We have some there. Uh, and the issues brought forth by the teachers is, uh, an, are issues, rather, of great importance, not only to the teachers, but to all the staff, to the administration, and to the board. Like nearly every school district in the state of Michigan, for the past many years, Livonia Public Schools has been and continues to be under significant financial constraints. For example, Livonia Public Schools has $23 million less in annual rev revenue than we did just seven years ago. We've made $17 million in budget restrictions since 2010, and that's over and above the $31 million from 2002 to 2010. Even with these cutbacks, our, our district fund balance remains at 3%, making us an early warning district. However, even with these cutbacks, we were able to offer outstanding educational opportunities to our students, thanks to the efforts of everybody in our district. Our district's focus remains on preserving programs, reasonable class sizes, 
and unique learning opportunities. And these have allowed Livonia Public Schools to remain a desirable, a desirable district for existing families and for new families, both which are vital to our district's success. It is very important to note that the vast majority of the district's revenue is directly controlled by the state legislators and by the governor of the state of Michigan, not this Board of Education and not this school district. Therefore, the voices of our board members, our administration, our staff, our parents, and our community members needs to be heard clearly and collectively by our legislators at the state level and by our governor that public education must be adequately funded consistently and comprehensively by the state of Michigan, as is their constitutional responsibility. Many have been advocating to that end, many staff members, many board members, many community members. And I thank from the bottom of my heart each and every one of you who are doing that. If you have, thank you. Continue to do it. If you have not yet, I encourage you to take a few moments to contact your state legislator and your governor and let them know that it is vital to the success of students throughout the state of Michigan, not just Livonia Public Schools, that we adequately and completely fund public education. The board members are advocating to that end, and we ask that everyone continue to join us. Thank you so much. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item uh, four, our consent agenda. May I have a motion, please? President Burt. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District approve the following consent agenda items as recommended by the superintendent. Item 4A, minutes of the regular meeting of April 18th, 2016. Item 4B, minutes of the special meeting of April 25th, 2016. Item 4C, minutes of the closed session of April 25, 2016. Item 4D, minutes of the special meeting of May 2, 2016. Item 5A, bills for payment, May 17, 2016. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Laura. Mr. Archibald, was, did we get audio on that, or do we need to repeat it for the benefit of the public? We got it? Okay. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions or comments from board members on this item? No? Uh, seeing none, we have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Laura. Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Laura. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. McDonald. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Pass down our minutes. Session. Yes. Are they on the bottom there? No. Oh. Do you want to get those who's after the meeting? Please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's here somewhere. And Mrs. Wozniak, we have one more coming after the meeting. Okay. Um, it takes care of item four. The next item on our agenda this evening is item 5B, resolution for Wayne Reese's 2016-2017 general fund operating budget. May I have a motion, please? President Burden. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the resolution supporting the general fund operating budget for the 2016-2017 school year for the Wayne County Regional Education Service Agency, RESA. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Centers and is supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Ms. Abbey, would you like to address this for us? Yes, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Um, we're bringing forward this evening the resolution to uh, accept Wayne County RESA general fund operating budget. As you recall, um, the state of Michigan put a law into practice a few years ago that requires each of the school districts within an ISD to review Wayne County's annual operating budget, their general fund operating budget, and then at a public meeting either accept 
or uh, reject that budget and if you reject it you would do that with what your explanation is at our May 2nd committee meeting we had an opportunity to review the three documents Wayne Risa provided us their general fund operating budget and all of their other funds that compromise all of their uh, financial resources their frequently asked questions and their annual report that was provided to the Board of Education and we did go through that um, in a lot of detail at our May 2nd uh, committee meeting um, and I think you had an opportunity to ask some questions at that time um, as you know Wayne Risa is uh, oversees 31 public schools over 275,000 children are in uh, the Wayne County ISD purview area they're responsible for developing curriculum professional development they provide leadership and certain Certainly, uh, they also uh, provide a lot of technology and other resources to local school districts. I've had an opportunity to review their budget. Um, it is consistent with prior years. It's a region, reasonable budget um, made on reasonable assumptions for the next year, and I would recommend uh, that the Board of Education accept the budget. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Are there questions or comments from board members or the superintendent? No. All righty. Seeing none, uh, Mrs. Bonifield, we have a motion by Mr. Centers and supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Will you please take the roll? Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laurel? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Abby, for your explanation more, uh, a little more thoroughly a few weeks ago, but thank you very much for handling that for us. The next, the next item on our agenda is item 7A, instruction matters, uh, district quality assurance review or QAR team presentation. Mrs. Alice. Thank you, President Burton. Good evening, everyone. I am very pleased this evening to have an opportunity to share with the Board of Education the process that was created, refined, revised, and extended over the past seven years that allows us to effectively and meaningfully um, provide support and monitor our school's school improvement efforts. In tonight's presentation, I'm going to start from the beginning, which is usually a good place to begin, um, and I'm going to start with a historical perspective that's going to take us back to May of 2009. That was the year in which the district participated in the advanced ed accreditation process for the very first time. We hosted a team from advanced ed um, who spent three days conducting extensive um, evaluation and review of our continuous improvement and school improvement processes. They met with teachers and students and administrators. They conducted interviews with many, many district stakeholder groups. They visited our schools and our classrooms, and they provided both a verbal and a written report of their findings at the end of their visit. And as a result, we were awarded the highest level of district accreditation and we're one of the first districts in the state of Michigan to receive this recognition. Needless to say, we were thoroughly excited and very proud of this amazing accomplishment. Um, prior to district-level accreditation, each of our schools independently applied um, for accreditation through Advanced Ed, and back then it was known as NCA. And they individually went through the accreditation process. Now, with our district-level accreditation, all of our schools are also accredited through Advanced Ed. So schools no longer have to apply for and go through the accreditation process on their own. Rather, now, as a district, we have the responsibility to ensure that all of our schools adhere to the Advanced Ed standards of quality, that they engage in continuous improvement efforts, and they meet the state reporting requirements. So in order to meet this new internal monitoring responsibility, the District's Quality Assurance Review Team, or QAR, was born. We held our first meeting in the fall of 2009. The QAR team was co-chaired by myself and Charlotte Worthen, um, a since-retired central office administrator. Additional membership on our QAR team included and continues to include a representative from our Board of Education in Wayne Risa, elementary school, middle school, and high school administrators, student service and curriculum coordinators, and additional central office administrators. Membership on the QAR team has changed over the years due to new assignments and retirements. Our initial QAR team had 12 members. We have expanded by a third, and we have 18 members today. The goal of the QAR team was to create an internal monitoring process that would offer 
a meaningful and valuable experience for our schools without being judgmental, without being evaluative or threatening. We wanted the process that we developed to provide feedback and support to our schools for both validating and improving their continuous improvement efforts. And we wanted the process that we developed to be based on the advanced ed team that had just been in our school district the previous spring. It took us almost a year to create our initial school monitoring process. We began our work in the fall of the 2010, sorry, the 2009-10 school year. And by the end of that school year, we had created a process that had three major steps to it. And each one of those steps would take place in our schools. The first step was to have a preliminary meeting. During this meeting, the visiting chair was expected to review the school visit process with the principal and the school leadership team, expected to share documents related to the visit, and then address questions and concerns. At that meeting, the expectation was also to set dates for the next two steps in the process. One was the school visit, and the second was a presentation to the staff on the findings of the visit. The second step was to actually engage in the school visit, which included a meeting with the school leadership team, who would give a brief overview of the school's demographics, share the school's school improvement plans, describe the results of their self-assessment of the advanced ed standards of quality, and identify self-selected challenges and strengths. Next, the core team would engage in classroom walkthroughs to determine if the strategies that were present in the school improvement plans were also present in the classrooms. And they also wanted to look to see if evidence to support the school's self-selected challenges and strengths were evident in the classrooms. Finally, the core team would review the binders and boxes of evidence that the school collected to support its self-assessment of the advanced ed standards of quality. Then, immediately following the school visit, the visiting team was expected to craft their report to the school staff. Within two weeks following the school visit, the visiting team chair would attend a staff meeting at the school to present a report of their findings, and their findings would include summaries of insights that they gleaned from the school's school improvement plan and processes, feedback on the standard self-assessment, observations from classroom walkthroughs, confirmation of the self-selected challenges, as well as um, recommendations to assist in addressing those challenges. To guide the school visit process, we created documents that included a school visit protocol, focus questions for guiding the discussion during the meeting with the school leadership team, a checklist for evaluating the evidence collected by the school to support their ability to meet the advanced ed standards of quality, guidance on conducting classroom walkthroughs, and a template for providing feedback to the principal and the school staff. We also used use some existing district documents, such as the continuous improvement cycle. And you have seen that cycle included in many school improvement presentations. So by the end of the 2009-10 school year, we were ready to pilot our internal monitoring process. Two principals, Mrs. Ann Kalick, the principal of Coolidge School at the time, and Mr. Richard Steele, the principal of Johnson Upper Elementary School, volunteered to have their schools participate in the pilot. We sent a different three-member team from our CHOIR team to each school to pilot both the process and the tools that we had developed. Dates were set, and the school visits took place. Following both school visits, of course, we met to debrief these experiences. Both Mrs. Kalick and Mr. Steele joined us. They shared their reaction to the visit, and they offered suggestions for improvement. The overall feedback from both our team members and from the schools that we visited indicated that the pilot process went fairly well. With a couple of tweaks here and there, we were ready now to implement district-wide our school monitoring process. But we also felt that we needed to communicate what we were doing and why. So we created a videotape and a PowerPoint presentation which explained the purpose and the process of the internal school visits. We also created a school visit schedule that would allow each school to be visited by a choir team over the next three years. <coughs> so at the start of the 2010-11 school year, we took this presentation and school visit schedule to each school where we met with the school leadership team and presented both to them. Then by the spring of 2011, we began to implement our district-wide 
internal process for monitoring <coughs> our school school improvement efforts. Over the next three years, feedback garnered from our core team members and from each school visited was instrumental in improving our process. After each school hosts, hosts a visit from the core team, the principal receives a survey to complete. The feedback is compiled from each school and reviewed by the core team annually. We also share our experiences visiting schools. And using both the school feedback and our core team feedback, improvements over the years have included modifying existing protocols so that the school visit process is more meaningful, revising existing doc documents and creating new ones, adding new practices to improve the overall effectiveness of the visit, and developing a process by which we follow up with each school on their efforts to address their self-selected challenges a year after the visit. Two years ago, in April of 2014, our district hosted its second advanced ed visit for the purpose of maintaining our district level accreditation. The outcome of the visit resulted in our district accreditation status being renewed. Once again, we were thrilled and pleased to have our continuous improvement efforts recognized and awarded with renewed district level accreditation. When the CHOIR team met following the advanced ed visit, we noted that the protocols used in this recent vis visit had changed compared to the original advanced ed visit five years ago. We felt it was important to modify our school visits so that they aligned most more closely with the advanced ed visit that had just occurred. So we made the following changes. We reduced the number of topics addressed with the school leadership team, which reduced the amount of time with them. We eliminated the review of evidence to support, support the advanced ed rankings. And we used this additional time from these reductions to spend more time visiting classrooms and just more, spend more time in those classrooms. Today, we believe that we have a school-based internal monitoring process that is just right. We know that because during the last two years, our survey results told us that the time frames that we used in the protocols were appropriate. The questions that we used for discussion led to rich and meaningful conversations. The cross-level QAR team configurations were, was beneficial, and the feedback that our reports provided to staff were thoughtful, encouraging, and well-received as it acknowledged the work and efforts of the school staff as well as the challenges they face. Since 2009-10, each of our elementary schools, upper elementary schools, middle and high schools have all been visited by a district choir team at least once and some twice. We suspended the visits during the 2013-14 school year when our district was engaged in the reaccreditation process because advanced ed visited many of our schools and classrooms. So now we are on our second round of visits. Last year, we visited Hoover, Cooper, Frost, and Stevenson High School. This year, we continue the school visit process by visiting Cass, Coolidge, Grant, Niji Eero, and the Career Tech Center. Next year, Cleveland, Randolph, Rosedale, Webster, Franklin, and the Western Wayne Skills Center are slated for visits. And then in the 17-18 school year, we will continue until Advanced Ed comes back for their visit in the spring of 2019, which is only three years away. Well, now that I've had a chance to summarize the development and the evolution of our district's process for monitoring and supporting our school school improvement efforts, let's go on a virtual field trip from preparing for to conducting our choir visits this year. You have heard enough from me. I'm going to turn the next part of the presentation over to our choir team members. Um, and we're going to begin with Mrs. Teresa Teresa O'Brien, who is the principal of Hay School and also a choir team member for six years. Teresa? Thank you, Sheila. Good evening, members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Oquist, and the Cabinet. This is our first choir team meeting. The first choir team meeting of each new school year is held in the fall. This is our organizational meeting where we review the choir team's charge and get a refresher on the internal review process we created and on all the documents we developed to assist us on our visits to schools. This serves as a review for many 
and as an introduction for our new core members. In this slide, you can see us meeting for this purpose. Then it's time for us to self-select a school we would like to visit and for some members to volunteer to be a chairperson of a visiting team. Time is then set aside for each team to meet and plan that school visit. As you can see from our smiles, we are excited and looking forward to our upcoming visits. As mentioned earlier, the first step in our monitoring process is a preliminary meeting at the school. To set up this meeting, the visiting choir team chair contacts the school principal to identify a date for the meeting to take place. In this slide, we see a copy of the agenda for the preliminary meeting and some additional documents that are shared with the school leadership team. The purpose of this meeting is to share the steps in the school visit, provide copies of documents used by the visiting team members, and respond to any questions or concerns the staff may have. The preliminary meeting includes the visiting choir team chair and any other members of the visiting team, along with the school principal and that school's leadership or school improvement team. At this meeting, the choir team chair reviews the agenda for the upcoming visit, walks through the visitation process, and shares documents. In this picture, Dr. Daniel Daniels is meeting with the CAS School School Improvement Team to review the expectations for their upcoming visit. Before the preliminary meeting concludes, the school visit date is established, and a staff meeting date is also selected for the team chair to come back and review the outcomes of the school visit. Staffs also have an opportunity to ask questions and share any additional thoughts they may have on the process. The goal of this meeting is to thoroughly and comprehensively present all components of the school visit so the school leadership team feels comfortable and prepared for it. I'd like to introduce Mr. Matt Mall, Assistant Principal of Emerson Middle School and a choir team member for the past two years, and Eric Stromberg, an original member of the choir team and principal of homeschool. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, the day of the school visit has arrived, and in this slide you will see uh, my QAR team colleagues meeting with the school leadership team at Niji Iro. We spent the entire morning at the school uh, where we began with a welcome by the principal, followed by introductions, as well as a whole school musical put on for us. It was quite an experience. Uh, if you get a chance to talk with some of the members here, they'll fill you in. It was, a, it was, it was awesome to see. Uh, the school leadership team um, then uh, met with and was provided uh, a brief overview to us of their school. They shared their school improvement goals, described their ability uh, to meet the advanced head quality standards, and described their strengths and successes, as well as areas in which they are struggling and challenges that they are working to overcome. This portion of the visit lasts for about an hour and a half. Then it's time for the probably the most enjoyable aspect of this, this process, and that's getting into the classroom and the classroom walkthroughs. Uh, the principal can provide us a map of the school uh, to each of the members, and depending on the size of the school, uh, we may even uh, get, receive a tour from the principal. We begin our classroom walkthroughs and spend the next two hours visiting classrooms. In this slide, we are visiting a classroom at Niji Iro. Here. Thank you, Matt. And here the team is visiting the fashion merchandising classroom at the Tech Center. As we visit classrooms, we are completing a document called the Effective Learning Environment Observation Tool, AKA the Elliot. The purpose of the Elliot is to help identify observable evidence of classroom environments that are conducive to student learning. We collect evidence on such things as having high expectations for students, establishing active, supportive and well-managed learning environments, monitoring student progress, and providing effective feedback, just to name a few. In this slide, we are visiting the auto tech class at the Career Center. When conducting walkthroughs, it is our goal to visit each classroom, depending on the size of the school and on the number of me members on the visit visiting team, we can usually accomplish this goal. And here is another slide of a classroom walkthrough. In this slide, we're visiting a classroom at Coolidge. While in the classroom, we talk with students about what they are learning. Then following the classroom walkthroughs, we spend a final few minutes with the principal, summarizing our morning at the school. It is now my pleasure to introduce Sarah Ahern, member of the team for four years and the principal at Cooper. Thank you, Eric. Immediately following the school visit, we meet off-site to write the CHOIR visit feedback report. Topics included in the report are an overview of the school, including student demographics, 
staffing information, and other elements that are special to the school, a summary of each school's school improvement process, plans, and products, feedback on self-selected advanced ed standards, feedback on classroom walkthroughs based on data collected by the Elliott, and identified self-selected strengths and challenges as well as next steps. Within two weeks following the school visit, the CHOIR team chair attends a staff meeting to present the feedback report. Of course, all members of the visiting team are welcome to attend. In this slide, you see me sharing the report with the staff at Grant Elementary. Strengths are recognized and celebrated. Challenges and struggles are noted, as well as suggestions for next steps. A hard copy of the report is given to the principal, along with a hard copy to our district's CHOIR team chair. Now, I'm happy to introduce Bridget Regan, principal of Cass Elementary, who you're lucky to have us join this year. Thank you, Sarah. Good evening, everyone. As mentioned earlier, each school is asked to complete a survey asking for feedback on the visit process. The five schools visited this year completed the survey, and the results were reviewed by the entire team earlier this month. In reviewing the results, we noted that all schools viewed this as a positive experience and one that is really helping each school move forward with continuous improvement. And because we believe in continuous improvement efforts, one year following the school visit, schools are required to complete a progress report which summarizes actions taken to address their self-selected challenges. The four schools visited last year received the progress report document last month, and the completed reports were reviewed last week where improvement efforts were recognized and additional follow-up was determined. At this time, I'd like to introduce Joe Anderson, principal of the Career Center, and Joe has been a member of our team for five years. Joe? Thank you. Um, I've been able to gain a little bit of a unique perspective because not only have I been on our core team for the last five years, but I've had the opportunity to be on external review teams in the state of Michigan. Um, last school year, I participated in a team that evaluated the Go Lightly Career and Technical Center in the Detroit Public Schools. And this year, I went and visited the Portage Central High School in Portage, Michigan. I was part of that visiting team. And this has allowed me to kind of compare and contrast um, some of the other programs around the states and see what other schools and districts are doing and be able to glean a little bit of the, the best of what I was able to find in those districts and bring it back uh, to our team for consideration. Uh, it's also been a good way for me to affirm all of the things that we're doing with our advanced ed school improvement. Uh, certainly what we're doing meets and then exceeds uh, the standards and then some. So it's been uh, good for me to be able to uh, be, out, uh, be out in the state and see some of the other programs as well. And I think Teresa is going to share next. Um, another thing we wanted to share, like from some of our reflections of visits, is several of us have done external visits in other districts. And kind of like the board gaining their hours, we have gained a lot that we've learned from other districts um, that we've brought back to our team and to our schools. And that's one of the really nice things about this whole process is we don't get a lot of opportunities to visit each other. So this is a nice opportunity for us to visit our strengths in our own district and and learn from each other and we bring things back to our team that then help us with our school improvement plan for the district level and then each of our building levels so it's it's a wonderful learning um, team and we gain a lot and we share a lot with the other buildings and now I'd like to introduce uh, Bill Green the principal of Roosevelt Almost done it. <laughs> good evening I would certainly echo all the comments of my colleagues this evening. To add, the quality assurance review process allows all of us to have highly engaging dialogue during our meetings. Um, we discuss and reflect on best practices. We uh, discuss current hot topics, educational, excuse me, educational trends, and most importantly, how we can continue to improve our own processes. It was important to me um, as a school that was visited by the external committee to make sure this just wasn't a rubber stamp group because it was an internal review and what I have found is it's even more rigorous we were visited at Garfield a couple years ago and I really feel the trusting relationship that we have with our colleagues allows us to really open up the dialogue and the discussion we have amazing people in our district you heard it tonight you see it in our visits 
it's just amazing programs, amazing students, and amazing staff. I'm just blessed professionally to be part of this team. I thank all of their efforts. And so now I'm going to turn it back over to Sheila for a conclusion. Okay. Thank you very much. I am so honored to have played a role in the initial steps of creating our internal monitoring process and to have been part of that process for the past seven years as, as it has evolved and expanded and extended along with growing our team membership. I'm sure you will agree after what you've heard tonight that our internal process would not be possible without the tremendously talented group of professionals that comprise our core team. They already have very busy schedules with their schools, their department responsibilities, their involvement in district level community and professional committees, yet they are truly committed to the work of our core team. They come to meetings with fresh ideas, they offer to do extra legwork, and they can be counted on to offer suggestions on how to do things better. I truly value their involvement and believe our internal process is as highly effective and successful as it is because of them. It has been and continues to be my pleasure and my honor to work with them collectively and individually. So I would like to please have them stand and be recognized. And Mrs. Oakless, you were a member for seven years, so please stand. Mrs. Laura has been a member for four years, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. In conclusion, I want to thank you for this opportunity to share with you our journey to create an internal review process. Um, we believe that our review allows schools to share their accomplishments, establishes a vehicle for self-reflection, creates opportunities for growth, provides support for school improvement efforts, and ensures that we are all striving to con continually improve so that the academic needs of all of our students are achieved. And I'm hopeful that after tonight's presentation, you will agree with all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Are there questions or comments from the superintendent or the board? Mr. Johnson. Thank you, President Byrne. You know, th this just shows the dedication that our school district has to improving, continual improvement. And we saw it when we went through the accreditation two years ago. Uh, the amount of work that went into that to just maintain where we are. And I just want to personally thank uh, all the choir team members for all the effort that you put in. It, uh, it really shows, and uh, it is greatly appreciated on this board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board or superintendent? Mrs. Oakley. I'll just make a brief comment. Um, <laughs> this really is, I'm, I hope you were able to glean, I think you were from um, both the video evidence and what was shared by each of our members, um, the, the truly meaningful process um, that takes place in our district for this internal review. Um, it's a long time between five years, it doesn't always feel like it was a long time, but it actually is five years between the full-blown external three-day review. And I often think that the work that's done in between by our choir team, the dialogue that takes place multiple times that year and during the visit um, is often even more beneficial than the the large undertaking when um, when we go through that as a district um, I want to I want to really acknowledge Sheila Alice for her efforts in in leading this process from the get-go um, she is a passionate advocate for school improvement for continuous improvement she is a an important voice at the state level um, and certainly in the development of what you saw here this evening. So thank you, Sheila, for all of your efforts. And, and thank you to a great team. It really has grown. It was exciting. Every year, people want to join. That's good. So, and I just want to thank Mrs. Laura. She is um, also a, an important voice, a, a unique perspective on our Board of Education um, as an educator and as a leader in the schools. Um, and as a principal, um, she brings a, a really important perspective. And oftentimes, I think, Teresa, you mentioned about getting out to other districts and being able to see, Joe, you talked about getting out to other districts. I don't think we can underestimate the opportunity for us to learn from others. Um, we're a large district, and so we have a lot of resources here. We have a lot of great minds and a lot of great hearts. But there is nothing wrong with um, exploring with what others are doing well and bringing that back. And I think that's one of the elements um, that we benefit from on the choir team. So 
kudos to all of you. Thanks for being here tonight and for the great presentation. Any other comments from board members? No. Thank you again on behalf of the board for all of your work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis in your assigned duties and, and on this enormous task that you have volunteered to be a part of. It's, it's very important to our district. Thank you so much. The next item on our agenda this evening is item 6B, nomination of parents to Wayne Risa Parent Advisory Committee or PAC. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Jarvis? Move that the Board of Education nominate Mrs. Eileen Brandt and Mrs. Kara Clark for a three-year term on the Wayne Risa Parent Advisory Committee or PAC. Three-year term will commence on the date the nomination is approved by the RISA board. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, supported by Mrs. McDonald, and we will be hearing from Dr. Terriel. Dr. Terriel. Thank you, President Burton, Board of Education, Superintendent Oquist. It is my pleasure to recommend our two nominees for Wayne RISA Parent Advisory Committee. Eileen Brandt has been our PAC representative since 2004. She has three children. One son is currently in college, and two of her sons currently attend LPS schools. Eileen attends all Wayne County PAC meetings, all Livonia PAC meetings, and she advocates for students with special needs across the state. Kara Clark is a parent of two students who currently attend LPS schools. She would be a new member to our PAC team, and I'm very excited to have Kara become a part of our team. I highly recommend both parents, as there are parents of students here in LPS, and also hockey parents. So they're ready <laughs> for anything. Eileen? <laughs> I just wanted to mention one of the very special things that I'm able to do as a PAC representative for the county is to nominate two people from um, our district for a special recognition award. This year, I'm very pleased to report that I am nominating Mary McFarland from Frost Middle School and also Jan Leach from Emerson middle school. Um, they're both outstanding and they will be recognized by the Wayne Risa board next month on June 15th. So I'm very pri privileged to do that. Thank you. Thank you, President Burton, for your consideration of these two parents to be our Wayne County PAC representatives. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from the superintendent or our board members? Mr. Centers. Uh, I just want to thank you both for uh, taking the time and the commitment that's involved with this. Uh, it is important that uh, our voices are heard um, and parents who have uh, special needs kids that uh, they're being advocated for. So, And I also noticed you both were here when I came in, so you've been waiting a very long time for this. So thank you for your patience with us and staying this whole meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, President Burton. Um, as a parent of a special needs child, um, I especially appreciate all the work that you put in and advocate for, for those children. It's, it's tremendous, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Just a quick note, uh, Mrs. Brand, I know you've provided many, many years of, of advocacy and service to us, so thank you for continuing to be willing to serve in that role. Um, and, and we welcome you, Ms. Clark, um, to, to join us, and we're so pleased to have um, two representatives from Livonia Public Schools um, to serve in this capacity. So thank you. Thanks. Questions or comments from other board members? Seeing none, uh, again, I thank you for your volunteer service. We have heard from myriads of volunteers tonight, uh, and they serve in so many different ways, and that's one of the things that makes Livonia Public Schools a phenomenal place to raise kids. Uh, we have... Most of us move into this district when we are in the middle of child, child rearing, but we don't usually even know what all of our children's needs are going to be uh, as they progress all the way through 12th grade and, and beyond. Uh, so thank you for, for volunteering in an area that's very, very special. Uh, it's, it, that it, it has a, a unique part of our population that needs special attention and absolutely needs advocates. We thank you for your service to the district and to those kids. We have a motion by Mrs. Jarvis, uh, supported by Mrs. McDonald and Mrs. Bonifield. Will you please take the roll? Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Laura. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. <laughs> President Burton. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. 
The next item on our agenda is item 7, personnel matters, and 7A is our 30-year resolution. May I have a motion, please? Um, President Burton. Mrs. McDonald. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the proposed resolution of appreciation for 30 years of full-time service with the district for the following employee. Bradley Pearson. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. McDonald, supported by Mr. Centers. Uh, and Mr. Winry, are we going to hear from? Hello, there you are. Everyone's moving around tonight. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, the board has traditionally recognized employees who have attained 30 years of service. And uh, tonight we bring before you a resolution to recognize Bradley Pearson, who has had 30 years of service with the district. Truly remarkable uh, when, when you attain that level of service. Um, Bradley's been uh, in information technology as a technician and really, when you think about it, um, probably very few people have worked here whose job has changed much more than somebody in technology. Mm -hmm. 30 years ago, VCRs were just hitting the market. So he's probably working on Super 8 projectors at the time. But look at what we have in our classrooms today and um, how much it's changed. Uh, so um, I'd like to certainly on behalf of administration thank Brad Pearson, but um, recommend approval of the adoption of the um, resolution of appreciation for Bradley Pearson to the board. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments from the board or superintendent? Thank you. Yes, yes, no, thank, yes. You. thank you, absolutely. Mrs. McDonald. Um, just in honor of this, since we don't give very many employees that reach a status, I'd be honored to read this. Go right ahead. No, thank you. Yes. All righty. Um, whereas the Board of Education is desirous of recognizing loyal and longstanding service to the Livonia Public Schools School District, and whereas it has come to the attention of the Board that Bradley Pearson has completed 30 years of full-time employment in Livonia Public Schools on February 3, 2016, and whereas he has given his talents, time, and efforts in fulfilling his many and varied responsibilities as an audiovisual technician in the, in the Information Technology Department, and now therefore it be resolved that the Board of Education hereby expresses appreciation and gratitude to Bradley Pearson for his sincere and dedicated service to the Livonia Public Schools and extends its best wishes to Bradley Pearson on reaching this milestone in his professional career. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there questions or comments from other board members? Uh, again, congratulations and thank you to your service, for, your, for your service, rather. Uh, we have a motion right now by Mrs. McDonald, supported by Mr. Centers. Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 7B, resignations, and this is for board purposes only. Uh, next item on our agenda is item 7C, retirements. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Burton. Uh, Mrs. Laura? Thank you. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District adopt the attached resolutions of appreciation for the services rendered by Tina Ak Atkinson, Jeffrey Dickinson, Linda Eagle Trudell, Janine George, Laura George, Janet Kopka, Pamela McMillan, Deborah Walker. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Laura, supported by Mr. Centers. Uh, Mr. Winry, would you like to address this for the board? Would, thank you. These eight employees uh, that are retiring have a whopping total of 161.3 years of service. Oh. Pretty remarkable also. It's five teachers, a counselor, a paraprofessional, and a secretary. On behalf of administration, I certainly would like to express our appreciation for their loyal and dedicated service, and I would hardly recommend that the board adopt a resolution of appreciation for these employees. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the superintendent or board members? Congratulations. Yes. So well. Congratulations. Yes. yes, and thank you very much again for, for the service of the district. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Laura, supported by Mr. Centers. Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mrs. Laura. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. 
Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item eight, reports from the superintendent. Mrs. Oakwest. Thank you, President Burton. Um, I have a few different items uh, to share with you this evening. Um, we had mentioned uh, when we began our work on the 2016 um, building utilization and facility um, team um, that we'd like to provide updates uh, at each of our meetings. So although I will not be providing um, a, an extensive update this evening, um, we did hear one from our co-chairs, Ms. Abby and Mr. Archibald at the committee meeting. Um, they will be providing um, a more in-depth um, review on May 23rd at our committee meeting with an update um, from this group who has been working uh, very, very hard. And we will be, um, we're pleased to also share with you that a good deal of information has been uploaded on our website. So there is now a large icon on the opening page of our website. Um, and I believe it, uh, Mrs. Jenkins, I think it says LPS Enrollment and Facility Reports or Study. Um, and so it's, it would be hard to miss. Uh, it's a large icon. And included in there um, is some background information on the two studies conducted by Plant Moran Cressa, um, the, de the determination of the board and of the school district to move forward with these studies, the purpose of it. Um, there are a number of FAQs, and that will continue to grow and be expanded upon. Um, and then we are also uploading um, each, uh, each meeting agenda and the materials that were shared uh, during that meeting. Um, so that has been updated. If you have not had an opportunity to take a look at that on the website, I would encourage you to do so. And then again, um, at uh, next week's committee meeting, um, we'll be sharing a more um, in-depth update um, to the community. Um, there are uh, a couple of uh, acknowledgments and, and excitement that we'd like to share. We had four students identified as 2016 Observer and Eccentric Academic All-Stars. And so we love sharing good news about our students. Um, a couple of these names are going to be familiar to you, and a couple uh, may be new. We have Allison Kale from Stevenson High School, Turner Miller, also from Stevenson High School, James Johns from Churchill High School, and Zachary Opsnick, also from Churchill High School. So we had a couple of those friends here with us um, a few weeks back. Um, we are so pleased uh, for them to be recognized in this way. Um, we also had a Franklin student earn a special art award. Um, senior Alex Meyer was honored with the National 2016 Yes I Can Award for, uh, by the Council for Exceptional Children at its annual convention. Um, he has been um, very involved in the arts and also since joining his high school's drama, drama club in ninth grade, he has been in every production since that time. His teachers refer to him as a team player and a leader who takes charge. Um, and we are certainly proud of Alex and his accomplishments. We then had three students, um, LPS students, honored recently um, and uh, have been awarded um, as Eagle Scouts. Um, for those of you that are familiar um, with what it takes, it is a tremendous commitment. So this evening we've talked about many, many members, from board members to staff, um, to teams that have been recognized, uh, making a commitment with many, many hours of volunteer effort. So I'd like to acknowledge um, Nate Jenks, um, who is a senior at Stevenson High School, um, who worked on, uh, I just want to cover very quickly what their Eagle Scout project was. Um, his project consi consisted of scraping, repairing, and painting the gazebo at Greenmead um, as part of Livonia's historical village. And he and his helpers contributed 158 hours to complete that project. We had Jack Jones, who was also a graduating senior this year at uh, Livonia Stevenson. His project was at the Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, um, a garage renovation project. His, he and his crew stripped off all of the old shingles, laid down new wood, um, and their team worked 183 hours to complete mm -hmm. that project. And finally, we have Brendan Vandekeef, who will graduate um, in June from Churchill High School. And he, um, his project was fixing up the nature trail behind um, Frost Middle School. Um, wood chips, um, and et cetera, and the trail was um, reconstructed, was barely usable, and um, is now um, open um, for use. And he and his band of helpers spent 124 volunteer hours. Um, so we just want to acknowledge the efforts of those students 
um, in reaching um, that great accomplishment. Um, you may have seen, uh, Mrs. Jenkins was able to share this on our website, and I understand um, it was a Facebook post hit. Is that how you would refer to it? It went, something went viral from Livonia Public Schools. Uh, we had a former student um, who attended Hull, Frost, and Churchill um, as part of the CAPA program, recently won a Grammy. And his name is Derek Lee. He um, won for the best musical theater album for Hamilton which is on Broadway. And so we are so proud uh, to share this. And um, this information was shared with us, and um, Ms. Jenkins um, added that on our website, um, an article that had come from uh, MLive and some additional information. Um, and that post has um, been celebrated and shared. So we always like to um, share the, uh, the you know, amazing accomplishments of our graduates. Um, and then finally, um, two athletic accomplishments. Uh, we recently had the inaugural Observer Land Invitational, and our um, Chargers were dominant. Both the boys and girls team in track and field um, represented LPS with pride, and they won first place out of, um, I believe, a dozen or so teams that were part of um, the inaugural in Observer Land Invitational, and they were quite impressive. And next week, um, the Spartans are hosting a 5K run on Sunday, May 22nd at Stevenson, $25 for runners. And if you are a walker, it's only 15 for you. So that's a bit of an incentive. <laughs> um, crawlers. And crawlers, uh, we'd like you to just come by and cheer the rest of yeah. uh, folks yeah. on. Um, if you'd like information, it's available. Um, if, you, if you search Spartan um, 5K Run or contact Stevenson, um, there is an online registration for that. So thank you. Thank you. The next item on our agenda this evening is, uh, is nine, uh, hearing from board members. 9A is the first reading of board policy GAAA -A -A, uh, personnel non discrimination. Uh, Mr. Archibald, do you want to address this for the board? I will. Thank you, President Burden. Uh, this is a change to this policy. Uh, as this is an action item from the Civil Rights Compliance Review audit that occurred uh, on October 8th. Um, and uh, simply said, this is a, uh, in this policy, we identify the process uh, that a person would follow if they wish to file uh, a civil rights related complaint with the district. Um, and the addition, the additional language simply informs individuals that rather than follow the district's procedure, they can contact the, univer the uh, U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights directly. Thank you. This is the first reading of that policy, uh, so we will be bringing that back to our next voting meeting for a vote on that. Are there any questions or comments from the board on this policy? No? All righty. Uh, the next item is 9B, first reading of board policy JAB, students non-discrimination on the basis of handicap, section 504. Uh, again, a first reading on a policy. Uh, Mr. Archibald, would you like to address that also? Again, it's the same addition. Uh, to this policy that was described on the prior policy. Okay. And again, being a first reading, we will not vote on that this evening. We will be voting on that at our next voting meeting uh, to be uh, in accordance with our, how we vote policy in, uh, policies in, out, or changed. Uh, the next item on our agenda this evening is item 9C, second reading of board policy JBA, compulsory attendance ages and placement of students transferring into Livonia Public Schools. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the Policy Committee and adopt Board Policy language for the attached document for the following. J, B, A, <laughs> compulsory attendance ages and placement of students transferring into Livonia Public Schools. Support. Board. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, uh, supported by several. Well, uh, Mrs. Jarvis's name will go on. This says support. Uh, Mr. Archibald, would you like to address this one also? Yes, thank you, uh, President Burton. Uh, uh, this is simply making our policies uh, two major changes consistent with the compulsory attendance age. Uh, prior to this change, uh, the compulsory age was 6 to 16. And beginning with who we believe is our current senior class, the majority of that senior class, the compulsory age goes from 6 to 18. Uh, and also, we 
uh, combined. We had some policy uh, JBB on entry ages, um, and so that all this information related to uh, ages uh, was in one policy. We combined a policy uh, with respect to um, compulsory attendance ages and entry ages into one policy. Okay. So your comments uh, cover both the uh, item C and D, JBA and JBB. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Back. Are there any questions or comments from the board on this first policy, JBA? No. Seeing none, we have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Loro? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is 9D, removal of board policy JBB, students entrance age. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District accept the recommendation of the policy committee and remove board policy JBB, students entrance age, as its language has been incorporated into board policy JBA, compulsory attendance ages and placement of students transferring into Livonia Public Schools. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Uh, again, Mr. Archibald's comments have already addressed this. Are there any further comments or questions from the Board of Education or the Superintendent? Seeing none, Mrs. Bonifield, we have a motion by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Will you please take the roll? Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Loro. Yes. Mrs. McDonald. Yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is 9E, second reading of board policy JD, student discipline. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the policy committee and adopt board policy language or the attached document for the following. JD, school discipline. Support. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, um, hang on a second. We have a motion by Mr. Center, supported by Mrs. Laura. We did, I did hear a correction on the uh, title on that policy, JD. Mr. Centers, would you like to read the, pol the title of that policy again? JD, student discipline? Student discipline? Student discipline, okay. I thought I had heard school discipline there. So it is board oh, policy, sorry. JD, student discipline. Uh, let me see here. Mr. Archibald, would you like to address this for us? Yes, thank you. In January uh, 2015, uh, we revised the attendance policy and the administrative procedure uh, pertaining to homework. And in there, there is a section related to students receiving credit for work while on suspension. Um, and th what the change that we're making today is really just to make uh, what turns out to be some information that's related to that on page 10 of the student discipline policy. Uh, it was inadvertently overlooked when we made those revisions in January 2015. So we're just cleaning up the language in this current policy to reflect changes we made to those other policies uh, a little over a year ago. Are there questions or comments from the superintendent or board members? No? Already. Uh, seeing none, we have a motion by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. Laura. Mrs. Bonfield, will you please take the roll? Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 9F, hearing from board members. As has become customary for our board, uh, rather than having seven of us repeat the same thank yous to many of our participants in our, in our, uh, our meeting this evening or over the past month, uh, we have appointed one individual on the board to take care of the, uh, a lot of those uh, comments for us. Uh, of course, after that individual is, is done speaking, others are certainly welcome to add anything that, that they would like to. This evening, Mrs. McDonald will be, uh, will be doing hearing from board members and issuing thanks and, and other comments this evening. All right, great. Mrs. McDonald. Thank you, President Burton. Well, we had many, many grateful things this evening to celebrate and to um, be able to um, 
I'm tired. It's tired. I'm tired and getting getting toward the end, but I have it all written down. But anyway, <laughs> we have a lot of good things going on um, in our school district, many things to be proud of. Um, first of all, I would like to recognize um, our art gallery participants from Frost Middle School, Alyssa Anderson, Cameron Hatfield, Matthew Helley, Her uh, Kara Hill, and Sarah Roscoe for their wonderful artwork that are is on display behind the board here um, and to the LPS community or LPS Education Foundation um, thank you so much for all of your hard work um, a lot of things that um, are being done in our school district are because of you and the support and funding that this um, foundation um, does for our teachers and our school Schools are is tremendous, and thank you to Diane Polizzini and Paul Calden for all of their hard work and all the volunteers' work that um, help with the foundation. Um, next, we had um, the support from um, um, the donations to um, our robotics team. So thank you to all of our um, folks there, Ison, Denso, Ford Motor Company, Linear Arms, AMS, Livonia Public Schools, and Roush donated $5,000 or more. Um, uh, Ali Ray Media, BAE Systems, BAS, BASF, Bright House Networks, Cooper Standards, HM White, RCO Technologies donated an average between $1,000 and $4,000. And at the $1,000 level, um, Forum Industries, Alpha USA, RO Steel, Duckworth & Associates, the Kiwanis Club of Livonia, NYX Incorporated, Tom, Tom Poro Marketing, and Vital Signs. Thank you so much for your many thousands of dollars in donations. Um, to our board members who received um, MASB certifications and awards, Dan Centers for Level 1, Mark Johnson and Tammy Bonifield, the Award of Distinction for Level 3. Congratulations and thank you for all your hard work. Um, recognition for our 30-year employee, Bradley Pearson, thank you for all your hard work um, as an audiovisual technician in our information uh, technology department. And, to recognize all of our retirees, Tina Atkinson, Jeffrey Dickinson, Linda Eagle Trudell, Janine George, Lori George, Janet Kopka, uh, Pamela McNillan, and Deborah Walker. Thank you so much for all your hard work and enjoy your retirement. And lastly, to our students and parents, um, I don't know how many of those folks are watching right now, especially the students, but this is the time of year that our students, especially our graduating students, um, need to, you know, they take time to enjoy prom and graduation parties, but I think as adults we need to make sure that we instill in these students to make smart choices and wise decisions. And we all want you to be safe and just think, don't think about the moment, think about your lifetime. And that's it. That's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Would any other board members uh, like to make any comments before we close this evening? Seeing none, uh, thank you so much to all of our uh, volunteers. We heard from uh, tonight alone, uh, and it was indicative of the whole year, of parent volunteers in, this, in our community, our school community, uh, of community business uh, volunteers, of student volunteers, of staff member volunteers. Uh, this Livonia Public Schools truly is a community, and it's one that I am enormously proud to be a part of and honored to serve on the Board of Education here. Thank you to all that you do uh, to many, 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 many folks in this community uh, to make our school district uh, the strong lighthouse district that it is and to allow our students to have a really full, well-rounded education. Thank you so much. I wish you all a good evening. Good night. <laughs>